Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare 24 here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going ahead and building the Vault F7U Cutlass. The Vault F7U Cutlass was a United States Navy carrier-based jet fighter and fighter bomber of the early Cold War era. It was a tailless aircraft for which aerodynamic data from projects of the German Arado and Messerschmitt companies obtained at the end of World War II through German scientists who worked on the projects contributed, though Vault designers denied any link to German research at the time. The F7U was the last aircraft designed by Rex uh, Bazell, who was responsible for the first fighter ever designed specifically for the US Navy, the Curtis TS-1 of 1922. Regarded as a radical departure from traditional aircraft design, the Cutlass suffered from numerous technical and handling problems throughout its short service career. The, the type was responsible for the deaths of four test pilots and 21 other US Navy pilots. Over one quarter of all Cutlasses built were destroyed in accidents. So yeah, the uh, F7U here Cutlass, a very problematic aircraft, a very weird aircraft. Um, it's interesting. It's got its cool looks to it, but it's also got a really weird look to it. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a sec, what exactly I mean by it. But it's overall a really interesting aircraft and has a pretty sad kind of you know service life behind it, uh, resulting in a lot of deaths. And the number built was 320, so a quarter of those uh, were destroyed in accidents. So you can just imagine um, just how many were actually destroyed um, in accidents. That's at least a little over 75. Probably about 80 of these aircraft were destroyed just in accidents alone. So yeah, definitely a problematic aircraft, but a really nice one to say the least. I think it's a cool design, definitely very unique and uh, a fun build to kind of add to any of your core, early Cold War scenarios or museums or anything like that. With this aircraft though, we only have the in-flight model as the landed version does sit at a very drastic angle. So unfortunately, uh, we aren't really able to replicate that drastic angle uh, in Minecraft too well. So we only have the in-flight model here available for you guys. You guys can obviously jerry-rig some own landing gear onto it if you do want to. But to keep it accurate, I'm not having any landing gear on this aircraft. Just do I would need to make a completely different model for it to sit properly. Uh, but anyways, before we go ahead and take a look at the aircraft, I want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go ahead and place a small amount to the channel. And in doing so, earn a vehicle request to your choosing every month. Really helps support the work I do on my channel and you get the cool benefit of having uh, your request built in a quick manner. So definitely feel free to check it out. Again, link's always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and take a look here at the aircraft and see exactly where we'll be going ahead and building. So uh, right here we have it in its naval, navy color scheme um, as it was designed to be a navy fighter. So kind of around that period, it's got the white highlights on the flaps, uh, the kind of white uh, underbelly, black tip nose and stuff. So the very standard color scheme of the naval aircraft from uh, the Cold War period. Uh, but yeah, so we have that on the front. We have the colored U.S. National Star insignia on all U.S. aircraft. Um, the intakes here for the engines, uh, cockpit here. And you look at it from the side here, and this is the really weird feature with it, is just how bulgy the uh, cockpit is. It just bulges out really far from the aircraft. Um, just kind of makes it very interesting um, in a way. So, um, yeah, interesting. Interesting aircraft to say the very least. We have the wings that come back. As you can see, there is no like horizontal stabilizer or anything like that. It's just the wings vertical stabilizers and that's pretty much the design here so definitely a very um, interesting aircraft and that, that terms of that kind of design we have the vertical stabilizers here obviously as you can see nothing too crazy here navy written on them and all that fun stuff and we get to the back we do have uh, the two jet engines here which you uh, can mess around with and have them on or off or whatever you want and we also have this uh, version here with the drop tanks which is based off of the uh, design of the aircraft in uh, the Naval uh, Air Station, or yeah, Naval Air Station, Pensacola's uh, Naval Museum. So uh, that's kind of what this model is based off of. We don't have any missiles or armaments and stuff like that, just because there is really kind of conflicting uh, pictures on what actually would be loaded out on this aircraft. But we just have the um, those uh, fuel tanks there, which I think looks good for what we have going on here. So, anyways, pretty interesting aircraft. It should be a fun tutorial. Let's go ahead and move into it uh, by moving into our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first uh, layers here, we have layers 1 and 2. Now, for these layers, uh, 
before we get started with them, I want to go ahead and mention if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to search these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the aircraft, and then we're going to be going ahead and taking the center line and then everything on the right side, we're going to build, and then you'll be up to you guys to take what we did on the right side and flip it over onto the left side. It's pretty straightforward. Once we do these first few layers, it'll make a little bit more sense exactly what we're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. The aircraft is completely symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be the same on the other. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to be going ahead and taking our quartz top slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of quartz top slabs. The total is going to be 17 blocks long. We then want to place down two iron trap doors on the end of that row of 17. After that, going up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of iron trap doors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Come off those top slabs. Followed by a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 quartz top slabs. And just to note that every time I say I say quartz, I mean smooth quartz, as that's going to be the block we're be, of choice we'll be using the entire aircraft. So make sure you are using smooth quartz because you get a better kind of blend of the textures. Uh, we're going to go then place down two iron trap doors after that row of eight of quartz. We then want to go and go to this iron trap door here, place down an iron trap door at the side, then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven quartz top slabs back, and then two iron trap doors back from that. Once we get to this point here, we're going to go to our last iron trap door here. We're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 white stained glass panes along the side there. And we're going to place down 6 smooth quartz blocks coming off those glass panes. We're going to go ahead and place down one more block here toward the front, a skeleton skull, one block toward the back, and an air skeleton skull on the end here. We then want to place down a row of 6 of white stained glass panes here on the middle 6 blocks like that. After that's done, we want to go and then go to our second to last pane here on the side. We're going to place down an iron trap door. Followed by a row of two of smooth quartz top slabs. One, two, and then an iron trap door after that, like so. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to do it for uh, that. And to go to the bottom here of the uh, pile of this little fuel tank here, we're going to go to the bottom here. We're going to go and place down an iron trap door here. One, two, three, and four quartz top slabs in their iron trap door. So looking at it from the side there, it should look something like this. Anyways, that right there is going to complete what we have there for layers one and two. And if I can figure out a way to get out of here, that will basically conclude what we have here for this layer. So uh, that's pretty it. That's pretty much it there for layers one and two. Looking at it from above here, this is what we should have with the layer all complete. Anyways, that right there is it. Let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. All right, guys. So going ahead and moving into our next layer here, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here for our center line, we're going to go off this quartz top slab and place down a black concrete block that goes up and forward from it. We're going to go ahead and place down a second black concrete block forward, followed by a polished black stone top slab, and then two end rods come out that polished black stone top slab. One thing also we want to add to the bottom of this first black concrete block here is going to be a lever that sticks down like so from that first black concrete block. After that, we want to go and then go back from this black concrete block with a row of smooth quartz blocks. That's in total is going to be a total of 20 smooth quartz blocks back, followed by a polished black stone block, a polished black stone uh, up down stair, and a polished black stone top slab with a wither skeleton skull here on the end of that top slab. With that done, go ahead and move into the sides. That right there will complete our center line of our aircraft, so it should look something like this here from the side. With that done, we're going to go to the sides here. We're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of this polished black stone top slab, followed by a black stained glass pane, a polished black stone wall, and then a diorite wall. We're going to go then take our smooth quartz, go back one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, and 19, smooth quartz blocks back, a polished black stone full block, followed by a polished black stone corner stair, and a polished black stone top slab coming out that corner stair like that toward the rear. Going ahead and going back up to the front here, uh, we're going to count back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and on your 8th, smooth quartz blocks, so right on top of this iron trap door, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a black concrete block like so. Followed by a and polished andesite stair coming off of it like so. Going back from that black concrete block, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Smooth quartz blocks back, a direct wall, and then a polished black stone wall directly after that. After we have that done, our next row here, we want to go and place down an iron trap door on the side of this black concrete block. And we're going to go ahead and use our give command here. So slash give at P. And we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a debug stick. Now we can use the debug stick here to go ahead and change the properties of, these iron, of this iron trap door to actually close it, or technically in this case, open it, um, so that it does sit flat against this black concrete block. If you do not have access to a debug stick, you can very simply use a birch wood trap door as a replacement for this. 
Anyways, after we get to this point here, we're going to take our quartz top slabs. Or sorry, actually our iron trap door. We're going to place down our iron trap door, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 quartz top slabs back from the iron trap door. Then 1, 2, and 3 iron trap doors back. Next row here, we're going to place down our iron trap door to the next side of that quartz top slab. Followed by quartz top slab, and then we want to place down one, two, three, four, and five of these uh, direct walls. And then we're going to place down a quartz top slab, and then one, two, and three iron trap doors back from that. Our next row here, we're going to place down a iron trap door next to that quartz top slab. Followed by a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Or actually, sorry, it's only going to be five quartz top slabs back. And then a row of four of iron trap doors. Our next row here is going to be a row of two of quartz top slabs. Uh, so starting off uh, right here, uh, we're going to have an iron trap door that comes off of this quartz top slab. Two quartz top slabs back from the iron trap door. Uh, two quartz full blocks, followed by a third, a fourth, a fifth. And then a six quartz uh, full block back. We're going to then place down a quartz upside down stair, and then a quartz top slab like so. So it should look like this here from the side. After that, we want to go and then place down an iron trap door, or a row of iron trap doors along the side here. So we're going to place down iron trap door here. And then we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Iron trap doors back to give you a row of 9. We then want to do a row of 8. So indent from the front here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to then do a row of 7. So again, indent from the front 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So this is what it should look like so far on the side here. We then want to go ahead and do another row of seven. So come off the side here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to go then do a row of six. So come off the second iron trap door. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then a row of five. Come off the second iron trap door. One, two, three, four, five. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and come off the second trap door and do a row of four out to the side there like so. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up basically what we have there for this layer. You are obviously take the same thing, do it on the air side there, and we'll have a design that looks like this here from up above for this layer. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number three. With that, let's move into layer number four. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a black carpet on top of this polished blackstone top slab here, followed by a polished blackstone slab, and then two black concrete back blocks back from it. At this point right here, after those black concrete blocks, um, you can kind of choose to leave space here for the cockpit. So if you do want to build a cockpit space, uh, we can go ahead and leave a space of four. So one, two, three, four. Or we can go ahead and fill in the space of four with four black concrete blocks. Either way will work. We're not going to be doing an interior, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this off with black concrete full blocks. Anyways, after we have that done, uh, after you have that space of four left open, or a row of four of black concrete blocks there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of stone blocks. That's going to go back a total of 15 so you have 15 blocks in total, followed by two black, or sorry, it should be uh, three black concrete blocks back, and then a polished black stone wall here on the very end. Next row out to the side here, we want to go ahead and place down a polished, or sorry, a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of that glass pane, followed by a black stained glass pane back, an andesite wall, followed by a stone brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen stone blocks back. Now right here you can choose a couple different designs you can uh, go about doing. If you do want to have your engines kind of activated, um, you can go ahead and do so. And to do that, very simply, we'll go ahead and just grab ourselves um, some shroom light and some orange stained glass. So like this, and we can just place down a shroom light block and then a orange stained glass block like that for the engines to kind of show them on. If you do want to have the engines turned off, we can go ahead and place down a black concrete block, followed by a stone button coming off that black concrete block, like that. So pretty simple, you can kind of choose between the two options there, what do you guys want to do. Anyways, after whatever, whichever one you decide to do, we're going to then place down a dark ochre trap door here, open it to the side, and our dark ochre trap door again, open it to the side like that. After that's done, going up to the front here again, we're going to place down a polished black stone, or sorry, polished inside upside down stair on top of the stair here, and then going back from it, we're going to place down a black concrete block. Uh, we then want to go and take our stone blocks. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stone blocks back, a black concrete block, and then 1 and 2 polished black stone walls back from that. After that, we're going to go and place down our iron trap door next to this black concrete block and use our debug stick again. We can go and set it to open to true, and again, substitution can be a birchwood trap door 
instead. Continuing on, we want to go ahead and then place down a daylight detector here on top of this iron trap door. We're going to turn that to night mode. And we want to go ahead and then grab a stone slab and our polished blackstone slabs. We're going to place down two, oh, sorry, one stone slab, three black polished blackstone slabs, and then one, two, three, and four of our stone slabs back. We're going to go ahead and place down two daylight detectors, turn them to night mode, and then on the very end here, we're just going to place down an iron trap door, like so. Our next row here, we're going to place down a iron trap door, <coughs> or sorry, a um, daily detector on top of this trap door here, turn it to night mode, stone slab, polished black stone slab, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five stone slabs back, two daily detectors, turn those to night mode, and then a iron trap door here. Next row here, we're going to place down a daily detector, turn it to night mode, followed by a stone slab, and then we want to go and then do a row of one, two, three, and four polished black stone slabs, three daylight detectors, turn to night mode, and then an iron trap door, like that. After that, again, a daylight detector up here in the front, turn it to night mode, two stone slabs back, followed by a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight stone full blocks, and actually nine, so it should stick out one past the end there. Let me just double check the count here, and it should be nine stone blocks in total after those two stone slabs. After that, going to the side here, Iron trap door on top of this block here, followed by a row of five of daylight detectors. So one, two, three, four, five. And again, we're going to go and turn these to the night mode, like so. We then want to go ahead and place down an iron trap door on the end here. And we're going to go then take our snow and place down two snow on top of those iron trap doors. After that, we're going to place down our iron trap door here, followed by a row of four of daylight detectors, turn them to night mode. And we're going to go then place down a iron trap door here, and then two snow pieces back from that iron trap door like that. Next row to the side here, iron trap door, followed by row three of daylight detectors, again turning these all to night mode. And then after that row three, we're gonna place down two iron trap doors back, and then a snow piece like so. We then wanna place down another iron trap door here, daylight detector, turn to night mode, iron trap door. And actually, sorry, this can be a row of three of iron trap doors, and then two uh, snow pieces. We then wanna grab ourselves a stone pressure plate, we're going to place down a stone pressure plate here, followed by one, two, and three iron trap doors back, and then we're going to go and place down two white carpets. Next row here, a stone pressure plate on the front here, one, two, three iron trap doors, and then a snow block or snow piece. Then a stone pressure plate here, two iron trap doors back, and then there's snow uh, piece like that on the top of that iron trap door on the end there. And after that's all complete there, that is going to basically wrap it up uh, for what we have for the main structure for this layer. Uh, one thing also to add on to the side here is a polished blackstone button on the side of this upside down stair and also on top. So we're going to go ahead and do it on both uh, this side and the top there just so I don't forget to do the one on the top of the next layer. Uh, but really all that's left for us to do now is to go ahead and do the banners. So I'm going to show you guys how to make these banners here for the side of the aircraft uh, for the National Star Insignia and this little kind of arrow here for the um, intakes. Anyways, let's go ahead and grab the materials we'll need to make these banners and I'll see you guys here in a sec. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our banner designs on the side here, we're going to be going ahead and designing these five banners that are going to be going ahead and going on the side of our aircraft. To go ahead and properly make these, we're going to need two blue banners, two light gray banners, a white banner, five red dye, and ten light gray dye. And we'll also go ahead and need to grab ourselves a loom. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom and starting with our uh, first banner, we're going to place a white banner into our loom, our red die. We're going to do the stripe in the center here for red die. And we want to go ahead and then place this banner back into the loom. And then we're going to take our light gray die, do the line horizontally across the top, and the line uh, horizontally across the bottom. And that's going to do it for our first banner here. Our next banner, we're going to go ahead and uh, take our blue banners, we're going to place them into the loom, and our light gray die. We're going to go and select for our first banner the box in the bottom uh, left hand corner. And then we're going to select the box in the top left hand corner. That's going to create our next banner here. And then our blue banner here, we're going to do the exact same but the opposite. So bottom right corner and top right corner. So you get these two banners here. For our next banners, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our light gray die, or light gray banners and our red die. We're going to go and do diagonal lines across each of these banners. So just like this to kind of create an X. So a giant red X. And same thing over here. So just like that. Now each of these banners we're going to place back into our loom and we're going to place our light gray die. We then want to split the banner in half. So our first banner here we're going to split it on half on the left side so it's the left side is going to be light gray die so you kind of create this arrow here. And then our next banner here we're going to go ahead and split it in half on the right side. So you get a banner that looks like this. And once we have that all done right there that is going to basically do it there for these banners. 
To go ahead and place these, real simple, on this first stone block, we're going to do the striped banner. These two blue banners facing each other, striped banner, and then your light gray banner so that it's facing in the direction where the red lines are coming off, basically coming off the front there of the intake and pointing forward. And then this banner over here will be used on this side like that. So just kind of for reference, if you use the same banner on both sides here, it's going to kind of, it's not going to work right, so you do need to make the inverse uh, versions of each to make sure they fit right. But anyways, that's pretty much it for that uh, little logo there on the side of the aircraft and a uh, little detailing. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer 4. Let's move on to layer number 5. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer here, we have layer number uh, 5. For layer 5, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an air brick stair on top of this black concrete block here. So the second one like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, and um, we're just going to go ahead and do 4. Uh, black stained glass box back. We then want to go ahead and place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 stone blocks back. I'm going to go and double check the count here and it is 15. We're going to go ahead and place down a uh, polished black stone block like so, a stair coming off that block, and then a slab, and then a wither skeleton skull coming off that slab. And that right there is going to make the center line. Moving out to the sides here, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off the side of this narrow brick stair followed by two narrow brick walls and two polished blackstone slabs. We then want to place down an item frame here on the side of the slab, a red concrete block in the item frame, rotate on side like so, so it kind of forms a diamond. And then we're, if you're on Java, we're going to place a dark oak wood sign on the side of the slab as well. If you're on bedrock, you're not able to place an item frame and a sign in the same block space, so if that's the case, just go ahead and uh, place on the item frame over the um, sign there. Anyways, after that point there, we're going to go ahead and then take our stone blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven stone blocks back. We're gonna go then place down a stone stair like this, so facing toward the rear, and then one, two, three stone blocks, polished black stone block, uh, polished black stone corner stair, and a polished black stone slab like that on the back. Next, we're out to the side here. We're gonna start off by going ahead and going up on our intakes. We're gonna place down a daylight detector, turn into night mode, fall by a stone slab, a stone stair face in this direction, and come off that stone stair. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six and seven stone stairs back so you have a corner stair and then you have our stairs back we're going to go ahead and place down a polished andesite stair a stone stair polished black stone slab and then a wither skeleton skull come off the side there of that corner stair like so after that's all done uh we want to go then take an iron trap door and we're going to place it down on top of this third stone block here followed by a daylight detector turn to night mode a stone slab then one two three and four stone blocks back followed by a light gray stained glass pane there on the very end. And that right there is going to complete what we have there for layer 5. And with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number 6. Before we go ahead and move on to layer 6, I do want to go ahead and mention one quick thing from layer 5. Layer 5 on the back tail here, we do have the uh, navy written out on the tail with banners. This is using light gray banners with the black writing. Now, I'm not going to show you guys in exactly in the tutorial how to do these letters as, uh, you know, a cut build take a lot of time for the tutorial uh, really to do that and there are plenty of tutorials online that show you guys how to actually make letter banners if you do want to include this feature but I just wanted to guys sh at least show you guys what letters you need so N A V Y and also the placement so as you can see here on these four stone full blocks same thing over here um, we're going to make sure we leave le left to right so we're just going to have the placement there on both sides in that position there so just like that on both sides there we reads left to right and uh, with that that is going to conclude layer 5 and let's move on to layer 6. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the front. On top of the first black stained glass block from the previous layer, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab, followed by a row of 3 of black stained glass blocks back from that narrow brick slab. We then want to place down 1, 2, 3 stone blocks, a stone stair, and then a stone slab coming off that stone stair. And then we're going to take our iron trap doors and go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 iron trap doors back. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then take our polished black stone, or, or sorry, our black stained glass panes, and we're going to place down a row of three across, two andesite walls, a light gray stained glass pane, and then we're going to place down a skeleton skull here at a uh, slight angle like so. We then want to go ahead and skip a space, and then we're going to go ahead and place down two stone buttons like that going back on top on the top there. After that, uh, go ahead and go into our tail. We're going to go ahead and go to this uh, stone block here. We're going to place down an andesite wall on top, followed by a row of two of coal ore, one, two, and then a stone block coming off that row of coal ore, like so. 
And after that's all done there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer 6. And with that, we're going to move into our final layers here, which are going to be layers 7, 8, and 9. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our final layers here, we have layers 7 through 9. For these layers to go ahead and finish off the build, we're going to place down a daylight detector here on top of the second uh, black stained glass block. And we're going to go and turn it to the night mode. We then want to place down an air brick slab, a stone slab, and then a uh, daylight detector again, this time turned to night mode as well. So just like that right there for the front, and that's going to include the cockpit. Going to move back here to the rear, we're going to go and place down a inside wall on top of this coal ore block, followed by a row of two of stone blocks back from the wall, and then we're going to go and place down a light gray stained glass pane like that coming off that block there. We then want to place down an inside wall up like this, two stone blocks back, and then we're going to go ahead and go to the top here, we're going to place down a polished black stone wall, followed by a black concrete block back, and then a black stained glass pane. Now this block choice up here can be any color you guys want, this is kind of just the tail flash for the aircraft and kind of specific to uh, which carrier this aircraft would belong to or what squadron, so again you can change it. Again this is based off a specific aircraft in particular, so you can change this up to whatever you guys really want, um, color wise. Anyways, uh, one thing also for a little bit of design there on the tail is I went ahead and placed it on a birch wood bundle on the side there as well, just kind of like a little symbol or something like that for um, the squadron this aircraft might um, might be a part of. Anyways, um, that right there is it for that. And uh, one thing you can also do is place down a lettered banner on this stone block. So for me, I chose E. Um, you can do the same thing there on both sides there. Again, this can be an identifier for uh, basically what carrier this aircraft in particular would belong to. Um, so yeah, uh, kind of up to you guys and what you guys want to do for that on both sides there. But that right there is going to pretty much conclude uh, my tutorial here for the in-flight version for the Vought F7U Cutlass. Hope you guys do enjoy this uh, tutorial and are able to put to good use. If you do want to use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This would be the thing from a sign of the build to my channel or this video if this does appear in any social media sites. And as long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free or favorite projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.